and welcome to another session of our lecture series. The topic for today is economic importance of fungi. As we know that fungi are an important group of organisms on the earth. They belong to the kingdom fungi or mycota and contain about 50,000 species. They are widely distributed and may be free living, parasitic or symbiotic. In this lecture we will discuss how fungi influence our day-to-day -day lives. They are our best friends as well as the worst foes. Some of the fungi are valued for their beneficial effects while others are deadly dangerous as they cause many diseases in plants and animals including humans. We will discuss the economic importance of fungi under two sections. One, the beneficial activities and second, the harmful activities of fungi. First of all, we will take up the beneficial activities of fungi. Fungi are beneficial to us in a number of ways. They provide food and medicine. They play an important role in many industries. They act as decomposers and help in nutrient cycling. They act as biological control agents. And they also play an important role in biotechnology. First of all, we will take fungi as food. Fungi provide a direct source of food for humans. Mushrooms and morels are the best examples of edible fungi and now cultivated at a larger scale worldwide. They are a rich source of proteins, vitamins, carbohydrates, minerals and amino acids. Yeast is also an important source of vitamin B and D. In addition, some of the foods which are not easily digested are made palatable by the fermenting fungi. For example, soya bean and cassava, although rich in nutrients, cannot be easily digested. They are acted upon by the fermenting fungi like rhizopus to make them more digestible and tasty. Single cell proteins obtained from yeast and species of Fusarium, Aspergillus, Penicillium, Neurospora and Candida are a substitute for conventional protein foods. Fusarium veninatum, isolated from the soil, is grown in fermenters to produce the mycoprotein, which is a major ingredient in the corn, a range of meat alternatives. Another important aspect of fungi is their use as medicine. Several fungi play an important role in the production of drugs. And an important aspect of this is the production of antibiotics. Antibiotics are substances produced by some living organisms to kill or stop the growth of other organisms like microbes. The wonder drug penicillin, which was discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928, is produced from fungi Penicillium notatum and Penicillium chrysogenum. Several other antibiotics have been extracted from fungi like cyclosporins, cephalosporins, campestrins, etc. Fungi even make lethal antibiotics against other fungi. For example, the fungus Penicillium griseofilvum produces the antibiotic griseofilvin, which is used to treat fungal infections. Many edible mushrooms like Agaricus bisporus, Lanitus idoides, etc., possess antitumor properties and also lower the blood cholesterol. One more important drug obtained from fungi is the ergot. Ergot is prepared from the Cecleratia of Claviceps purpurea, a fungus which parasitizes the rye crops. The Cecleratia contains some alkaloids which are the source of powerful and important drug which has uses in childbirth. Another important drug is the ephedrine which is used in the treatment of asthma and nasal troubles and is synthesized from benzaldehyde by the action of yeasts. Fungi are also known to produce steroids. Steroids are the adrenal and gonadal hormones and their derivatives, their extraction from the biological systems is highly expensive. But a variety of fungi have the capability to synthesize these steroids. For example, the fermentation of plant glycosides by Rhizopus nigricans and Aspergillus niger is responsible for the synthesis of steroid hormone cortisone. 
Fungi also become a source of vitamins. Many yeasts, including Saccharomyces cerevisiae, are a rich source of vitamin B complex. A vitamin D precursor called ergastrol is prepared from some molds and yeasts. Rhodotorella gracilis is a source of vitamin A. Now, we come to another important property of fungi, that's their role in industries. Fungi are also used for the production of many kinds of drinks and foods like cheese, beer, wine, bread, cakes, soya sauce, etc. Fermentation forms the basis for brewing and baking industry. For this process, the baker's yeast, that is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, is used for the fermentation of sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Brewing mainly relies on the alcohol formed during fermentation by fungi. For example, Aspergillus oryzae is used for the fermentation of rice to produce wine. In baking industry, the carbon dioxide bubbles produced during the fermentation allow the dough to rise, making the bread lighter in weight. In cheese industry, the genus Penicillium is used for the maturation of cheese. Its species give the characteristic flavor and texture to the cheese. Similarly, the fungi Aspergillus oryzae and Aspergillus sojae are used for the production of oriental foods like soya sauce. These fungi have also been used for the commercial production of organic acids like citric acid. It's produced by the fermentation of sucrose and molasses by Aspergillus niger. It's used in the preparation of carbonated soft drinks where it acts as an acidity regulator. Another important acid produced by fungi is the gluconic acid. Fermentation of sugars by the species of Aspergillus and Penicillium produces gluconic acid which is used in textile, food and pharmaceutical industries. Fumaric acid is produced by Rhizopus stolonifer upon fermentation of sugars and is used for synthesis of alkyl resins and wetting agents. Other important organic acids produced by different species of Aspergillus, Mucor and Rhizopus are Itaconic acid, Kojic acid, Gallic acid, Oxalic acid, Lactic acid and Succinic acid. These fungi also serve as a source of enzymes. They are known for the production of different kinds of intra and extracellular enzymes. Some of these enzymes are even extracted at the commercial scale. For example, invertase is produced by the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This enzyme catalyzes the hydrolysis of sugars into fructose and glucose and is used in confectionery and paper industry. Amylase is produced by the Aspergillus niger and Aspergillus oryzae and is used in medicines, alcohol industry and in the synthesis of dextronized starch. Cellulase is obtained from Trichoderma riesli and is used for the saccharification of cellulose and lignocellulose. Lipase is a fat digesting enzyme obtained from Thermomyces. It's a heat resistant enzyme and is used for the preparation of biological washing powders. Many other important enzymes are also extracted from fungi like lactases, pectinases, proteases, etc. Fungi also play an important role in agriculture. They act as decomposers. Fungi along with bacteria are the natural scavengers responsible for the decomposition of organic debris. Saprophytic fungi secrete certain enzymes which decompose complex organic compounds into their simpler forms making the soil nutrient rich. Fungi therefore help in the nutrient cycling and also increasing the soil fertility. Fungi are also used in biocontrol. Some fungi are used as biological control agents against plant pests including fungal pathogens, weeds and insects. Fungal spores are sprayed over the diseased plants for killing the pests. These are cheaper 
and environment friendly as compared to the chemical pesticides. And they can also be used again as the soil borne pathogens like nematodes. These fungi also can be used as bioherbicides or also called as mycoherbicides, that is, the microbial weed killers. For example, Cercospora eupatori can be used for the control of weed eupatorium adenophorum. Fungi also act as mycofungicides, that is, several fungi produce toxins that are used to kill pathogenic fungi. For example, Trichoderma lignorum inhibits the growth of root rot fungus. Another important role of fungi is in bioremediation. Some substances like pesticides, effluents, etc., commonly known as xenobiotics, pose a serious threat to environment and health. The methods used for remediation of this contaminated land and water are expensive and may also prove detrimental to the environment. Fungi produce some exoenzymes which act tough on these xenobiotics. Therefore, utilizing fungi for their bioremediation provides a far more eco-friendly and cost-effective solution. These fungi also form mycorrhizae. As we know that mycorrhiza is the symbiotic association of fungi with the roots of higher plants. The fungal partner derives food from the roots of higher plants and in return it supplies mineral nutrients to the other partner. These mycorrhizae are essentially important for the growth of many plants including crops. Fungi also play a role in soil aggregation because they secrete some mucilaginous substances which help in soil aggregation and therefore in soil fertility. They also form a source of growth hormones. For example, the fungus Gibberella physicori is an important source for the plant growth hormone Gibberellin. These fungi can also be used as test organisms. Since fungi have a short life cycle and a fast growth rate, Many of them are used as research tools for understanding various life processes. They are used as test organisms to detect the presence of certain specific compounds. For example, Neurospora crassa is used as a detector for the presence and amount of vitamin B in a given sample. Many other fungi produce colored spores which are used as specific dyes. A number of fungi, in particular the yeasts, are important model organisms for studying problems in genetics and molecular biology. While talking a lot about the beneficial activities of fungi, like other organisms, they also have a bad side. That is, fungi have a number of negative impacts as well. They cause many plant and animal diseases, spoil many foodstuffs, and destroy valuable items like paper, leather, textiles, and timber. First of all, we will take up the plant diseases. Most of the fungi are highly pathogenic, causing several diseases in plants, especially the crops. These pathogenic fungi may lead to the destruction of entire crops and even a catastrophe. For example, the most disastrous Irish potato famine of 1845-49, to 49, which was caused by Phytophthora infestans, resulted in the death of almost a million people. The most common diseases of plants caused by fungi include blights, rusts, smuts, mildews, rots, wilts, warts, damping off of seedlings, apple scab, club root disease, etc. Now the animal diseases. Many parasitic fungi are responsible for causing various diseases to animals, especially the domestic ones. For example, mucomycosis is caused by mucor and rhizopus. Similarly, aspergillosis is caused by aspergillus. And panceliosis is caused by the genus Pancelium. Other common diseases of animals caused by the fungi are black leg diseases and the actinomycosis. These fungi are known to cause several diseases in humans as well. The most common fungal diseases in humans are caused by the dermatophytes, that is the fungi which infect the skin. 
for example ringworm and athlete's foot which is caused by the fungus trichophyton in humans fungi also cause many disorders of respiratory tract kidney liver eye nose etc for example aspergillosis a disorder of lungs is caused by three species of aspergillus aspergillus niger aspergillus flavus and aspergillus fumigatus mycosis is a serious disease of immunocompromised persons and is caused by the species of aspergillus in some cases the diseases may even prove fatal for example the accidental intake of aflatoxin that is a mycotoxin produced by aspergillus may cause liver cirrhosis and cancer candidiasis a deadly disease of blood stream is caused by candida albicans cryptococcus neoformans can cause meningitis in aids patients the airborne fungal spores can even cause allergy another harmful activity of these fungi that is the spoilage of food fungi are responsible for spoiling food items particularly those which are not stored properly any kind of moisture in stored food articles allows the molds to appear rendering the food inedible mucus and rhizopus these species are usually found on bread pickles and frozen meat species of alternaria aspergillus and penicillium are known to destroy the fruits and vegetables when stored these fungi can even spoil important and valuable articles like papers leather goods textiles electronic gadgets photographic films glass items and valuable timber spot print on leather items is caused by the species of penicillium and fusarium several species of fungi cause degradation of wood thus destroying the valuable timber the wood degrading fungi are of three types one white rot fungi they can only digest the lignin part of the wood leaving behind the white cellulosic part second brown rot fungi which can only digest cellulose and hemicellulose part of the wood leaving behind the brownish lignin part and third and last type is the soft rot fungi they again can digest only the cellulose part of the dead wood but they traverse the lignin fibers by swelling them with water some of the fungi are also known as hallucinogenic fungi because they secrete some hallucinogenic substances that if ingested alter the perception power of humans and even may damage the brain cells for example mushrooms like amanita paniolus etc secrete hallucinating substances like psilocybin and psilocin with this we come to the conclusion of today's topic that was economic importance of fungi in this lecture we discussed both the beneficial and harmful aspects of fungi how these little organisms can boost our economy and how they can lead to the mass destruction of our cash crops i hope you might have followed the lecture well thank you